Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Galant Bodybuilding Mountain. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about the five, or at least my favorite, natural bodybuilding leg exercises for overall leg mass. Now you're going to notice there's going to be an overwhelming amount of favoritism to the compound lifts. And the reason for this is that I find that compound lifts are really more a natural way that the leg moves. So when the hamstring, the adductors, the quadriceps are being used together, not only do you get more muscular activation at once during that exercise, but it's also a more natural way for the leg to develop. For instance, with leg extensions, I find that some people can do leg extensions and it's an okay movement for them, while other people, leg extensions may irritate their knees and so forth. Also, with movements such as leg curls, which I do like, there's not as much emphasis on the overall hamstring, like all the heads of the hamstring. There's more of an emphasis on just the leg bicep itself. So as much as a leg curl can be a good exercise, I find it's not my favorite way to hit the hamstrings. And ideally, you do get some hamstring work when you're doing some of the compound lifts where you also include your quadriceps and so forth. So my first favorite leg exercise for bodybuilding is of course the squat. Because not only does the squat include all parts of the leg and the glute and the lower back and so forth, it also teaches the body to work in unison as one. So regardless of what range of motion you find is right for you, you're gonna notice that you start to learn how to efficiently push and balance at the same time, therefore activating a lot of muscles. And because you're putting a lot of weight on the spine during the squat, there is an overall anabolic effect from this exercise. So it really stimulates the entire system. So you may notice after squatting heavy in the next day or two, you notice a carryover in the muscular pump and feeling or well-being feeling in the whole system. So for this reason, regardless of whether you're doing a technically perfect squat or not, I find the squat is a great way to acclimate the body to handling weight on the entire musculoskeletal structure. And there's a definite benefit to doing so. So yeah, that's why I like the squat. The squat might not be for everybody. Some people have ankle injuries or certain sorts of issues where they find the squats just impossible. No matter which way they do it, they get issues. And for those people, I'd say, okay, just find a different way to squat. Maybe you need a machine squat or a Smith squat or, or whatever. But I find that if you can, a squatting is a definite effective way to activate the legs and the overall system in the body and that's why it's my number one. Now exercise number two is the Romanian deadlift. The Romanian deadlift is unbelievable for activating lower back and hamstring together. So therefore you have to make sure you fire the lower back at the same time as firing the hamstrings. So it's a great way to rehabilitate lower back injuries if you know they're not too extreme, right? So. The big thing about hamstrings is that when the hamstrings fire, there's this stress on the lower back to round. So you have to strengthen the lower back so that it can maintain the slight arch in the lower back at the same time as the hamstring firing, and therefore you get perfect stability in the spine and more safety. It's almost like having a natural belt. When the hamstring and the lower back learn how to fire together properly, it's like having a natural belt, which is why you never see me wear a belt when I'm training legs. And at the same time, you're really getting a lot of stress on all heads of the hamstring or most of the heads of the hamstring. So I find that the Romanian deadlift is not only great for activating the hamstring and the lower back, but it's also great for you finding the perfect range of motion so therefore you're not stressing tendons unnecessarily in the lower back and rounding the lower back and you're able to adjust the exercise so therefore you feel the most amount of hamstring activation possible. The Romanian deadlift also gives you a lot of back activation, such as a little bit of lat and trap uh, in the exercise because you're holding on to that bar with decently heavy weights. So for this reason, I'd say the Romanian deadlift is one of my favorite hamstring exercises. So it is in the leg category and I'd highly recommend anybody to do Romanian deadlifts as a part of their program, regardless of whether they're doing barbell or dumbbell, because you can do both and each variation is slightly different and may give you different results. Now my third favorite leg exercise is one that I actually hate and love at the same time. And that is the walking lunge. 
Now, whether you do this with a barbell on your back, like say your gym has access to a free weight barbell that you can just put on your shoulders and uh, some sort of rack and you can just walk up and down some sort of uh, carpet or a cross training type of carpet or CrossFit, right? Or maybe you have, uh, you know, some dumbbells and you're, you're walking along the side of the gym or in a parking lot or whatever, or in your yard. Uh, the walking lunge is an incredibly effective way for hitting the overall leg. A lot of quadricep, a lot of hamstring, a lot of glute. And I find it's great for developing proper hip function along with firing of the leg muscles. Now, some people I think can go too deep in this exercise. They feel uh, that it's necessary for them to touch their back knee. I never felt that that was necessary and I found it was actually counterintuitive in a lot of cases for myself. But at the same time, the walking lunge is not only a great muscle workout, it really gets the breath going too. So it does transfer over to anaerobic sports such as hockey and some form of sprinting or walking hills and, and so forth. You'll find that the walking lunge transfers very well. But the great part about the walking lunge is because you're doing one leg at a time, it works on stability. It works on also stretching different areas of the hamstring and the adductors. So therefore, you're going to get freer movement when you do squat from doing the walking lunge. So I highly recommend including the walking lunge in your workouts if you want your legs to grow. And also it gives your lower back a bit of a break from squats or from Romanian deadlifts, right? So if you're squatting and you're doing a lot of lower back work, the walking lunge allows you to really push those legs into failure without taxing the lower back so much. So yeah, the Romanian deadlift is my number three on this list. Now my fourth leg exercise, on this list is the one-legged squat. As much as I like the one-legged squat in a barbell rack, I like it best in a Smith machine rack. So using a Smith machine with the one-legged squat, I find extremely effective for pushing those legs into a deep, deep, deep level of failure. The burn is just crazy because you're not so busy stabilizing so much, but you're stabilizing just enough that you're getting a lot of recruitment of different muscles but the stabilization doesn't become the weak link. It's actually the main muscle groups that do. So I find the Smith machine one-legged squat is a great way to push the legs into deep levels of failure. And sometimes I would go one leg, then the next leg, and then go back to the first leg again, and then back to the next leg and do this giant set of deep failure. And man, you notice that your legs are on fire and they really get pumped up and veiny and everything. It's, it's a great exercise. So if you haven't tried the one-legged squat on the Smith machine, it takes a bit to get used to, but once you get used to it, you'll notice that you can push your legs into a deeper level of failure than you can with the free weight one-legged squat. So it's, it's definitely something that you can uh, experiment around with, and it may take you a little bit to find your groove, but once you do, it's a great exercise. Now the last exercise, number five on the list, and I know what you guys are thinking. You're thinking I'm gonna say leg presses because leg presses are, are a decent exercise. I, I do like leg presses as much as they don't involve any hip flexion, like you're not extending the back and really including the hamstring from an extension of the hip point of view. But they're, they're not a bad exercise if you wanna give the lower back a break. But I wanted to put in this other exercise that you don't see done a lot, but I find it's very effective. And that is the step up. Now, I like doing a very shallow step up. It's only like a standard stair step and up and down. And why I like this exercise is that it hits the quadricep, it helps realign the hips, and I notice you get a very deep burn in the quadriceps because you're not trying to overstretch the exercise at all. Like some people, when they do step ups, they try to step up on a really high box or a high bench or something. And, and there is definitely something to be said for that. But for me, I use the step up to really pump blood into the knee and into the quadriceps without challenging in any sort of range of motion. You know, I'm not trying to overstretch the ligaments or the tendons. I'm just trying to pump reps into that area. And I find the one-legged step up is a great way to realign the hips and to super saturate the quadriceps with blood. And uh, yeah, I think it's something worthwhile for you to experiment with and you don't see it done that often. So you could use lighter weights with this for more of a cardio type of burst, or you can use some moderate weights in order to challenge those quadriceps but whichever way you find works best for you, you're gonna notice that you definitely get a deep level burn that's, I, I know it's on another level when it comes down to the pain you can feel from this exercise. So definitely try this out. I know a lot of people when they go to the gym, they go to the leg press, the squat, and those two things back and forth, and maybe another type of machine like a leg extension, leg curl, or, or, or a squat machine or something. But if you haven't done step ups, it's very simple. You just need a pair of dumbbells and a stair, 
and just up and down on that stair. And you could do variations where you just keep most of your body weight on that front leg for constant tension, or you can, you can move the body weight to the front leg and then to the back and then to the front again. And I've noticed both variations still work the leg extremely hard. And uh, yeah, I, that's what I like about it. it. It's just a different type of pump and a different type of uh, activation that's worth trying out. So yeah, those are my five exercises that I believe in my own opinion, are the greatest leg exercises for natural bodybuilders. But I mean, it's always gonna be based on individual preferences and body types and so forth. So yeah, I know you guys are gonna be doing hack squats. Some of you guys are gonna find the hack squats are great. Some of you guys are gonna find that leg presses are great, whatever, and that's all good too. But yeah, these are my five favorite exercises and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get hold of me, just go to naturalgolandbodybuilding.com and thanks to the patient supporters and take care for now. Not Natural land.